everyone and welcome to today's General Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps or a cat cleaning her face because that is just as exciting as anything else going on in the video right now. Huge day on General Hospital. Oh, such a way. I don't think there's going to be a new one tomorrow because it's the day before the 4th of July. Uh, let me check real fast. There is a new one tomorrow. Why did I think that tomorrow, like, everybody takes off? I have no idea. Okay, so it's not the last day of the week, which makes me feel better, because we'll find out who the boss is tomorrow. But let me get to the beginning. So, at ELQ, Spencer is at ELQ, and Rosalie is not, and it turns out Spencer sent Rosalie home because it's a national holiday. And Spencer is demanding an answer from Nicholas as to why he stole the company from the quarter mains. Loaded language there. Oh, William DeVry just quoted my tweet. Wait, let me read it to you. If you didn't know, William DeVry is supporting our twi our Indiegogo campaign. This is san oh, Sanctuary. You guys are helping with donations. Almost no donations yesterday, none today. I know, it, we got like a huge influx. Oh my god, let me show you. This is this has been so exciting. I've been actually talking to William DeVry. Um, really cool. Uh, but... That's so cool! I have a different hospital person. Tw okay, let's let's move on. Okay, woo! So excited. <laughs> oh, and I have I have definition on my abs, but no, that is I'm so excited right now. I'm just telling you all the exciting things happening in my life. But let's get back to it. So Nicholas tells Spencer that he didn't steal the company um, from the quarter mains. He got a significant amount of shares and the board to back him as CEO. And I'm like, oh, you're forgetting the part where you blackmail people to get the significant amount of shares. And Spencer says that everybody is saying that Nicholas lied to get all the things that he says, you know. Um, oh, and then he says, you know, you said it was wrong for me to lie, so why is it okay for you to do it? And Nicholas says, well, I did it for you. So then Nicholas tells Spencer that they're cash poor. I wish cash poor was, like, my problem. I'm just, you know poor poor um and that they definitely would have had to downsize if he hadn't done anything and I'm like oh no you could have I don't know uh you know you would have to give up the flat in London or the house in Greece but then I'm like wait you could have rented out the flat in London rented out the ca the house in Greece like if you own real estate that's money in the bank right there you rent it out you have some income like but no apparently we just need to steal a multi-million dollar company that's easier whatever so, Nicholas is trying to get on Spencer's level, and he goes, to put it in your terms, I didn't want anything, anyone to think that you're a townie, and Spencer goes, well, what's wrong with that? And I'm like, character development at its finest, I'm so happy right now because Spencer is finally the little boy that I always knew he could be. So, Spencer tells Nicholas that, um that his attitude changed because he found out his mother was a townie and Spencer tells Nicholas not to hang what he did on him like you you do this but don't say you're doing it for me um but uh, lo I love that little boy so much so Spencer's having major character development where he realizes that after the fire he was so busy wondering if people thought he was ugly on the outside that he became ugly on the inside and he almost seriously injured Cameron and Emma and that he says he wants to turn over a new leaf before he really became a bad person. And he wants Nicholas to do the same. So he wants him to call the quarter mains and give them their company back. So Nicholas is like, well, that's not how it works. I'm not going to call the quarter mains, but I'm de you've definitely given me a lot to think about. And then he puts on this ridiculous 4th of July hat. It says the person who had a ridiculous 4th of July headband. I don't want to talk about it right now, but it was basically like a huge American flag on a hair headband. We got into Fridays because of it. I was I was 10 years old. I was 9. It was the millennium. Woo, millennium. So anyway, at Kelly's, uh, Jake tells Sam that he thinks there's a way to get ELQ back from Nicholas. And he tells Sam that the plan is to blackmail Nicholas into giving some of the shares back, and that's where Sam comes in. And Jake really should stop blaming himself for what happened to ELQ because he got there at the tail end of the whole thing and it had been going on for months so there was really nothing he could do about it at his, that point. Rebel, what are you doing? What are you doing, Rebel? So Jake is going to keep this whole thing from Elizabeth because he doesn't want Nicholas to manipulate her and, you know, she can't be in him. <laughs> Rebel! She can't be manipulated into telling something she doesn't know. And um, then Jake brings up the fact that Nicholas never told Sam what that he happened to have her husband, her dead husband's wedding ring. And Sam is like, oh, but his son was in the hospital. And Jake's like, really? But it didn't occur to him once during this whole thing just to mention it. Right, Rebel? Right, Rebel? Right, Rebel? So 
I think Jake thinks Nicholas is keeping secrets about Jason and from Sam, which is very ironic considering Jake is Jason. Um, so, okay, so it's not specifically that Nicholas knows anything about Jason specifically, but just to prove a point that he's shady and about his past and definitely has skeletons in his closet. So, to switch over now inside Kelly's, Franco tells Kiki that Morgan and Denise are involved and she doesn't believe him. So then Kiki thinks that Franco's just insecure in his new relationship with Denise. So Franco tells Kiki that he and Denise aren't even in a real relationship. So then Franco tells Kiki that Denise told him the reason she agreed to fake the relationship was because Kiki was trying to set her up with Silas. And Kiki's like, yeah, well, actually, that's true. And it kind of hurts her feelings that Denise would, like, go through all this. Like, she feels like she put Denise in a really awkward situation. So then the whole thing kind of drops. But Kiki says, you know, when you first said something could be going on between Denise and Morgan, I, you know, it, it like, she, she felt some truth to it for a second. So... Hopefully they'll get caught. Speaking of Denise and Morgan, they spent some time together today in Port Charles. So Denise blames Morgan for not being able to see Avery anymore. Don't know why. And then Morgan has... Oh, it's because Morgan told Sonny about their indiscretions. So then Morgan has hardly any reaction when Denise tells him that Michael gave Avery back. Like, he's he's in disbelief, but then he's not actually happy about it because this makes Michael the golden child again, and Michael can do no wrong, and Michael is so great. So at least when Michael was, you know, keeping Sonny's daughter away from him, that was, like, one thing. But now Michael's the golden child. And, um... So Denise gave And, um... And he's like, oh, well, well, my dad had it out for you. And there's nothing I can do. And Denise is like, yeah, and you had to tell him what happened between us. Then, so then Morgan tells Denise that it would be a lie to say nothing's going on between them. Because when he sees her, he sees the first woman he ever truly loved, blah, 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 blah. And then before she leaves, he tells her that he'll talk to his dad. He doesn't know if it'll make a difference, but he'll talk to him. Oh, Dante, 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 Dante. So really, Dante left uh, Canada without checking the other floors to actually, you know, talk to Lulu or anything. So then Valerie comes over and Dante tells her that he was right and Dylan and Lulu are having an affair. And he, like, says about the clothes on the bed and the messed up sheets, da 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 So then Valerie's like, this is unbelievable. What did Lulu and Dylan have to say for themselves? And um, Dante's like, I don't know. I didn't stick around to ask. And I'm like, really? Because it might have been really important, Dante. Really important. So then Valerie still tells him that he needs to talk to Lulu because he could have gotten the wrong idea. And Dante thinks Lulu's out just looking for another Spencer adrenaline rush. So now Dante jumped to the conclusion that maybe her and Dylan have kept in touch this whole time. And Valerie's like, look, just because this is happening now doesn't mean your whole past is a lie. So then Valerie suggests that they go pick up Rocco from Sonny's. And Dante says he doesn't want to go anywhere. He wants to stay there with her. And I'm dying over here because, like, she's literally trying to save her family and she logistically she couldn't tell him he's a cop like it wasn't about lying to her husband it was not bringing the cops into this and if they sleep together and then Lulu comes home tells him the whole situation he's gonna feel so guilty I don't think he could even feel vindicated in any way he would just feel so guilty so please please hold out doing anything Valerie and Dante please Speaking of Lulu and Dylan, the guy is, uh, so the gunman who's walking them out to his car is dis disabling the alarm on the van, and Lulu and Dylan realize they can't get in the van with them because then they'll be sitting ducks, so Lulu pretends that the baby is coming right now. So one of the guys got a call from the warehouse and says that the whole thing was a setup. So they get whatever bag full of whatever out from under her shirt, and the guy takes a handful. It's like, like, green, not green, it's like hay, I don't know, it's some kind of floofy thing. So, um, he's holding in his hand, and Lulu just, like, pops his hand up, so it goes in his eyes, and they try to escape, but at first it's unsuccessful. So, one of the guys calls Lulu a pretty little thing, so she beats up the guy that's holding onto her, and, like, I don't know, threatening to break her neck, and they knock everyone out successfully at first, but then this one guy, uh, wakes back up. And Luke, this is the most adrenaline-y part, are you ready? Are you ready? So... Friendly reminder that I have hugged Nathan Parsons. No big deal, but, you know, friendly reminder. Uh, so, oh, we just got a contribution to our campaign. I'm going to check it real fast because we have to live in, we have to live in suspense. Aw, so sweet. Oh, is that two? I think that's two contributions today. Okay, let's go back to this. So, 
Luke opens the door and Ethan is there. So Luke walks towards Ethan and Ethan tells him to stop because he doesn't want to kill him. So then it turns out Ethan is standing on a pressure bomb and he tells Luke that he's starting to get woozy and he needs to tell him something and Luke's like, all right, well, first things first, tell me what you need to tell me. And I'm like, that's how these things always should work. Like, soap opera says, tell me what you need to tell me right now. It would, like, cut out years of storyline being delayed. So it turns out Lucky's alive. He got loose and he took off because he wasn't able to untie Ethan before the guys came back in. And Ethan has been standing on that pressure bomb, bo my God, pressure bomb for, for 12 to 16 hours. So no wonder he's woozy. So Ethan is practically begging Luke to leave, and Luke is insisting on saving him. Ugh, bad guy Luke, right? So Ethan kind of reminisces about the first time he walked into the Haunted Star, and Luke tells him that he's learned so much from him, and he loves how he lives his life, and it's just really touching, okay? You should really look up that scene if you haven't seen it. So then Luke disarms the bomb, but it's like a 20 to 1 shot, it's actually disarmed. So Ethan still wants Luke to leave before he steps off the bomb, and Luke isn't having it, so then Ethan, um, okay, so Ethan stops Luke's first countdown and tells him he loves him, and Luke tells him he loves him, and so instead of just having Ethan step off the bomb, Luke starts counting down, and before he gets to one, he dives onto Ethan, so, like, they dive to the other side of the room, and Luke lands on top of Ethan, so had the bomb gone off, Ethan would have been protected, and I'm just like, Basically, I have no words. It's just that facial expression. I'm just sitting here like... And as soon as they're over the fact that they're alive, the gunmen come in with Lulu, Dylan, Holly, and Laura. So the gang's all together. And they hold the gun up to Lulu. Luke surrenders his gun. And the boss is there. And they leave it off where everyone's like, Oh my god, but we don't know who the boss is. Do you have any guesses? I'm very interested. I have no idea. Like, I, unless it really is Jerry Jacks. But, like, I don't know if it would elicit that kind of reaction. So tell me who you think it is down in the comments. It would mean a lot to me. And, um, oh my god. See, now that I know there's a show tomorrow, I'm even more excited. I thought we were going to have to wait till Monday. Because for some reason, everything closes on July 3rd in my head. Um, maybe that's because I need a day to prep for everything. But anyway, if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. It would mean so, so much. And also, if you could check out our Indiegogo campaign that William DeVry is supporting, has contributed to, and is just amazing. Uh, that would also mean a lot to me. And if you can't donate, if you could please share it on Twitter or Facebook, wherever you can. Uh, we're starting to get some real traction. We're over $1,200, which is amazing because two days ago we had $45 in there. And it's just... It's really mind-boggling. It's a little overwhelming. Um, but I will see you tomorrow from Wardrama Hospital. I hope you have a great day. Bye.